In this video, guys, let's talk about when a flag is not a flag. Stick around. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. All right, so I, I like praying flags. Under the right conditions, a flag is a great setup, strategy, chart pattern to trade. Just because it's the dynamic supply demand I like. Shift in one direction, bit of a pause, shift in the other. It's gotta be in the right conditions, gotta be with the right dynamics, gotta be in you know, a good volume, a fresh highs, catalyst, all the kind of stuff we've talked about many times before it's been on this channel. But when does it turn into something that's other than a flag? So high type flag, we know the score guys, got the pole, got the flag, pretty textbook stuff. But really, it's not black and white, is it? We know that the market has many gray areas, it does stuff that we don't like it to do. So what point do we go, you know what, this was a flag, I took it, assuming it was a flag, we're gonna continuation, we haven't got that, I need to do something about it. Personally, I might just cut half of the position, just take a proactive decision, move forward, be the aggressor, don't let the market dictate to me, I might just do something like that. So, uh, but anyway, what are the two main things you gotta be wary of? For me, it's duration of the flag. So you've got a decent pole, let's say you've got that, starting to flag at highs, I don't want to see it spending too long in that consolidation area. Now, again, gray area, it depends on the setup because really if it's accepting a higher price and it's come a long way and it's a fresh area and it's really, really stretched, you're gonna get some time. It's not gonna, it's gonna be pause, drive hard, pause. You know, if you already, maybe you're like the third leg of the tr trend, which I probably wouldn't take anyway, but third leg of the trend, you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer, but. If it's on the initial pulse, let's say, which are flag poles, uh, flags are generally nicer and cleaner when they're initial pulse of a trending move. Initial pulse, I mean, from a range bound environment, bang, we've come out rather than pull back, pull back, pull back in a trending environment. Uh, if it starts sitting there too long, I just don't like it. So what's too long? I know that you guys are asking me that. To me, it's a bit subjective, this. Ah, I think this is where you've got to use your eyeball on your decision. You've got to go, hey, what's the, what's the length of the pole and how long have we stayed in the flag? And how long did it take to get from kind of zero to 100 percentage terms of the pole? Uh, and then looking at it and going, hey, this really is, is taking too long. The whole point is that it's demand, 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 hitting offers, hitting offers, hitting offers, 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 offers. And then whatever's happened is either one or two things for it to stall and come into this flag is there's a seller sitting there soaking up all the buying or the buyers are backed off a little bit and they're waiting, but there's no sellers to push on the bids and it's pausing and they're waiting and the expectation is they'll come back on the throttle and start lifting offers again. That's the point of the flag. So the longer you sit there and consolidate, the more likely it is just to mean revert back to the lows. And we see that so often, guys, it sits there in a high tight flag and just kind of, you know, runs out of puff and, and it kind of goes lower and uh, it becomes a mean reversion type thing because that's what's going to happen when you've got the imbalance. If there's no more pressure and no repressed scenario or a catalyst, then eventually it just goes back into balance. That's mean reversion trading, right? The other one is, um, you know, it's okay, by the way, it's okay if, if, if the flag is sloping, pennant, some people call it, uh, some people call those differently if it's if different angles kind of to a point, but forget about textbook for now. Sloping flag's okay, but as long as we're not going too low. It's another thing, if the flag is going too low, I just don't want it, I just don't want it because the point is, I don't mind it sloping, I don't mind it going to fresh low. Some people hate that, but I don't mind that. And here's a little thing that I like to, I've got rule of thumb if you like, is that, again, subjective, you can use percentages and go, hey, if it's 25% or more off the highs, you probably don't want it. But here's something I look for. If it spends a little amount of time, at a lower price, i.e. it goes lower, has a little look, then pushes back. I do, so I'm okay with that. In fact, I quite like that because there's a place for me to leverage my stop against and I like taking those kind of deals. But if it's going lower, goes up, comes back and keeps looking at lows and keeps looking at lows and keeps flushing but not bouncing hard and you don't see any buying coming in, leave it, just leave it because that's not as clear cut. Even though you know there's probably still some buying pressure there, the selling pressure is accumulating, accumulating, accumulating. What you can do in that scenario is kind of wait for some kind of trend line break and take it a little bit later and say, well, you know what? Flags turn into a pullback. I don't want it yet. I will take it if we push up higher and I get maybe a little tiny flag 
uh, on a very short time frame up here and, and trade it like that or something of that nature. So, you know, too low is really another warning sign if you like. So duration of flag, if it takes too long, again, I'm just like, ah, don't really like this. I won't abandon it always and I'll more than likely just trim something or look at the on, on the trade on its own merits. You know, if it's got every other box ticked but it's taking some time, I might be like, listen, you've got another 15 minutes so you better do something or you've got another couple of days if you're swing trading it you better do something uh, and looking at it in its own scenario not being so binary about it but that is a slight warning sign and the same with the depth of the, of the low, against the low side if it comes back quickly the final thing guys if it does this so it comes up comes back and flags there i'm still okay with that as opposed to being flagging at highs i'm okay with it because often it leaves a bit of a vacuum there's buyers 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 wow you know, some stops or whatever it is taking those offers comes back but there's still support the key is you know the key attributes of the flag is that you've got some kind of support something that's stopping it from coming back to where it was however many minutes ago before you take it which is kind of that's your baseline price so something to be aware of something to look out for if you're trading the flags if they start going too long just just be aware, just go, you know what, you're not quite the trade I wanted. Doesn't mean abandon it because, you know, there still can be valid, but just be careful of it. And then if it's going too low, if it's going lower and lower and lower and lower, you can get into a trap. Be like, I still want to take it, still want to take it, still want to take it, still want to take it. But in actual fact, you know, it, it's almost turning into a mean reversion play and you're fading that reversion back to the mean, which is probably where it came from uh, before it did the spike. Not, not black and white, guys, trading never is. I mean, if there was some golden rules that, absolutely worked every single time uh, it would be great but rule of thumb generally that duration and that uh, price movement uh, to the downside obviously this is a bull flag scenario but just flip on its head if you're in a bear flag scenario take care guys keep that risk managed see you next one bye bye